Hello guys, how are you? I hope all are safe. So from our previous video, we saw a part of uh, a uh, chapter one, which is uh, asexual reproduction. From this uh, tutorial, you will be seeing only about sexual reproduction. And I have given a lot of examples so that you guys will be understanding it very easily. So, and one more thing, uh, from this tutorial onwards, I will be explaining uh, in both Tamil as well as in English. So that will be more efficient for you guys to understand as well as to follow up. So please pay attention and listen to the class. That will really help you out. So let's start with the outline again. So what we saw in our previous video, we saw about modes of reproduction, asexual reproduction, and their uh, significance. All that, all those things we have seen in our previous tutorial. So from this tutorial, what we will be seeing seeing is sexual reproduction, and we'll be understanding the different modes of sexual reproduction, and it will also help us to realize the significance and advantage of sexual reproduction and its role in evolution all these things will help us to understand eventually so let me uh, start with the introduction which i have already uh, sh shown you guys in um, in my previous video so i told you what is reproduction in organisms right i gave you a definition i also told you it is a fundamental feature it helps in the continuation of the species and it is a repeated process and that this repetition finally help us to introduce the variations and this variation again helps us helps in the uh, process of adaptation and evolution of new species so if you recall i have explained all these things in my previous video one more thing in my previous video whatever i told you about this variation and evolution is mostly seen in sexually reproducing organisms not in asexual reproducing organisms it is there but when you compare with asexual reproduction with uh, sexual reproduction you find more variation in sexual reproduction so i'll explain you why that variation happens in sexual reproduction in our further slides we'll be seeing more about it i'll explain it one by one and i wanted to show you and i wanted you guys i wanted you guys to remember all these things what you learned in your previous video so that is why I just i just put this slide here for, uh, in the introduction so anyways let's uh, start with the proper introduction for our today's chapter is sexual reproduction so guys uh, let's see the proper introduction of sexual reproduction so in sexual reproduction male and female gametes this is the male gamete uh, this example is from a mammal okay let's consider it is a human it not consider i have given an example of human you know or gamete cells so it is in uh, in simple it is a process where male and female gametes fuse together and form a diploid cell or zygote so uh, now let me repeat it again it, it's sexual reproduction in simple it is a fusion of male and female gametes together fuse and produce a diploid cell which is also known as zygote and this process is also known as fertilization i will be talking about more in further slides okay now uh, before that let me uh, ask you guys uh, what is diploid what is haploid so you must have studied what is diploid and haploid in your lower classes right so diploid cells means which has a full number of chromosomes for example let me start with this um, sperm cell in human this male gamete which is also known as sperm cell the female gamete which is also known as egg or ova so if you if you look at it the these two cells will have 23 chromosome and 23 chromosome let me tell you that all the organism all living organisms have chromosomes so if you take humans our all of our somatic cells i mean somatic means body cells all of them have 46 chromosomes so during reproduce reproduction what happens 
Due to meiosis process, this 43 chromosomes becomes 23 chromosome due to the reduction process. So which you must have studied in your lower classes. Anyways, I will be explaining. So this cell is known as haploid, which means one number, which has only one homologous pair of chromosome, which means 23 pairs of chromosomes. And again, this has 23 chromosome. So these two, when fused together, they becomes 2N or diploid cell. And this process is also known as, this cell is also known as zygote. So now we know what is sexual reproduction, right? Let's have a proper introduction uh, definition for it. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes to form a diploid cell which develop into a new organisms. So like diploid in a full uh, two n chromosomes. Two n na, for example, number humans are humans la total we have 46 chromosomes all cells name so for other other than number diploid cells also. so all cell may 46 chromosome but another the gamete cell circular reproducing cell circular either path in half of the chromosome the which 23 inger go 23 of mother kit and mother kit and 23 father kit and oro rent a few saw go 43 uh, 46 cells cut two numbers which means uh, 46 chromosome of homologous pairs 23 23 homologous pair Again, in the cell, uh, sperm cell contour genetic information very different arco. In the cell contour genetic information variation are different arco. So random fuse are 46 chromosome complete are there, but you get different variation in appearance and all these things and all. So that is why this sexual reproduction leads into you know uh, genetic variation. So after fusion, this cell grow fertilize uh, fertilization takes place after fertilization mitotic due to mitotic division the different parts of the individual grows then finally an offspring or egg one is produced okay so and uh, this is how generally sexual reproduction involves in most of the organisms but you have you do have different types and kinds of sexual reproduction which we will be seeing further into the more uh, into of uh, future slides so again this sexual reproduction i told you this will have half of the genetic information from the father and this will have half of the genetic information from the mother so when these two fuse together they create a whole new cell which look which looks completely different i mean though it might look uh, you know some of its parent uh, characteristic but if you look at its genetic information due to this mixing it will be completely different so that is why sexual reproduction leads to genetic variation now let's see how this genetic variation is happen uh, happens in all the mammals and most of the sexually reproducing organisms those that process you have already studied in your lower classes but anyways i will be repeating it here okay let's see how this sexual reproduction leads to genetic variation of many organisms that does this sexual reproduction let's see that fine so you all must have studied what is mitosis, what is meiosis process in your lower classes, right? So today I'm going to explain you meiosis process because this meiosis actually plays a significant role in the genetic variation of sexually reproducing organisms. So you know generally uh, in mitotic uh, cell division, you have two main process which is interface and mitosis. Likewise in meiosis, this also starts with the interface where the genetic material or the chromosome produce its own copies. So for example, and then it enters into the meiosis one. So unlike mitosis, you have two meiosis process, which is meiosis one and meiosis two. So in mitosis or in during the interface, again in interface, you know, during the synthesis phase only this DNA replication takes place, which means the chromosomes, which is present inside the cells, replicates and produce its own copy. So once it has produced its own copy, uh, I'm, I'm telling you uh, for all the organisms, the chromosome numbers varies. Okay. For humans, the chromosome numbers are 
46 chromosomes in each and every cells that you find it in the human body except this germ cells that is being produced by this meiosis process that's what we are going to see first one thing meiosis is also known as a reduction process and another thing which you want to you know which you should keep in mind in meiosis there is one important process known as crossing over or independent assortment that process helps in the introduction of genetic variation that's what i'm going to explain uh, so i told you all human cells have 46 chromosomes you know mitotic process in mitosis you have two process interface and mitosis likewise in meiosis it starts with the uh, interface where once the chromosomes has been copied its own copy which means it had 46 chromosome now it again produces 46 chromosomes but we cannot call that as uh, you know uh, 92 chromosomes since it is being he held or attached by this uh, centromere we consider this as a single chromosomes so though we technically have uh, 46 46 chromosome totally 92 chromosome we call this as a single chromosome so you you call 46 chromosomes and 92 sister chromatids so you know what is sister chromatids right so these two chromosomes are known as to sister chromatids so 46 46 you got 92 sister chromatids so adu once idu mari copy panni produce panta piraga meiosis 1 la and then meiosis 1 ku enter agum interface la irundhu meiosis 1 ku enter agum bodu inga da the crossing over or independent assortment indra or process nadakum if you can recall it so what happens you know this chromosomes carries genetic information this also has dna as well as uh, actually this chromosome is made up of uh, dna and uh, genes so these genes are the part of the dna so collectively we call this chromosomes right so what happens during meiosis one this crossing over or independent assortment take place so in you know we have totally 46 chromosomes and he, uh, 123 chromosomes will look exactly similar to each other. For example, in the yellow color, all 23 yellow me, one M R R co, one information R co. And then, in the green color, for example, so in the maternal or paternal chromosome, or either paternal or either, all me homologous R co, homologous na one M R I. All information, one A gene information R co, one M R I R copy range wise, all me. So you got totally 23 23 46 and you in the dna replication mode you got 92 sister chromatids idu ellame meiosis 1 la first phase less just like mitosis you have in meiosis also uh, prophase anaphase sorry prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so once the copy of dna has been produced it will enter into meiosis 1 where this crossing over takes place. So in the unga picture representation, first homologous are in the yellow color pathing na in the independent assortment or crossing over. Adawa the Idu Idu one na send the kitter information Idu Kunjumu, Idu Kitter information Idu Kunjum Kudutta Peru, Ore Madria Irkad. So number the homologous solamdia. So independent assortment, meiosis one, prophase space la Nadanirchi. Then it enters into the metaphase, metaphase of the meiosis one. So again, remember you have. 46 chromosomes but 92 sister chromatids ellame randomly middle align panitte in the centromodia function enna theriyum so randomly it will pull apart uh, 23 23 chromosomes technically we call 46 46 chromosomes 46 46 sister chromatids so pull panitta piragi it undergoes cytokinesis and produce two cells which has 23 chromosomes 23 chromosomes actually other number 46 does or no but since a centromere all attached i number still one chromosome other than the two sister chromatids are one chromosome other kind of consider one row so in the 23 chromosomes in the 23 chromosomes but 46 sister chromatids 46 sister chromatid so again these two cells again undergo you know cell divisions and you remember independent assortment mulama homologous chromosomes are illa ipo ella ellame mari mari irukku so none of the chromosome looks similar so all of them have combined and has mixed characters so once again these two cells which has been produced by meiosis 1 again undergoes meiosis 2 so where it again during metaphase this will align in the middle 
and this 23 chromosomes that is 46 sister chromatids ellame so 23 chromosomes in the side of 26 23 chromosome in the side of remember in the 23 chromosomes and a 46 chromosome 23 23 chromosomes and a 46 chromatids so once idu marubadiyo meiosis 2 la metaphase la in the centrum of each side rendu cell yum pull pannum bodu rendu side um 23 chromosomes 23 chromosomes mulama separate aayi you get haploid cells now you understand from a single cell it goes meiosis 1 where you get two chromosomes which will have 23 chromosomes 23 chromosomes or 43 46 sister chromatids sister chromatids and again it undergoes meiosis 2 there it produces two uh, two uh, each cell will produce two new daughter cells which will contain 23 chromosome 23 chromosomes and if you compare it see if you look at it none of them will look similar to each other and if you look at it when you compare with any one cell with it, with its mother cell none of them will look exactly like to each other so now you understood understood how this uh, variation is cre uh, created or produced due to the meiosis process again so from 46 cells how you get 23 Uh, a number of chromosome in each cells for each uh, gamete cells so this is what meiosis in simple we call reduction process so that is why when this 23 chromosomes are haploid cells goes and fuse with another 23 uh, chromosomes uh, from the mother you get 46 chromosome the process is complete you get the entire cell which has again 46 chromosome now let's see again how you have you have to uh, there are another kind of variations that can be caused due to the mutation but it is not good for the any 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 individual organism because it have it creates lot of uh, disorders like diseases cancers and uh, and again you have one more errors too but these things and all is not uh, good for the uh, uh, you know a, a organism that produce actually reproducing uh, uh, individuals now we have seen how this uh, sexual reproduction leads to genetic variation let's see further about Uh, further about uh, uh, this uh, sexual reproduction so you have different types of sexual reproduction like you had in uh, asexual reproduction but not as much as you had in you know uh, asexual reproduction only few types of sexual reproduction is there but based on their uh, you know different types of uh, gametes and fertilization again it can be categorized into different groups but in overall three uh, two types of uh, sexual reproduction one is syngamy fertilization conjugation and you have you are you have another type is also known as parthenogenesis uh, people sometimes call this as asexual reproduction but it is not asexual reproduction i will tell you why it is not asexual reproduction this this is also a type of sexual reproduction now let's see what is syngamy more in detail in this slide syngamy means it is a process it is it syngamy means it is a process where two haploid number of cells two haploid cells or gametes fuse together and produce a zygote okay this is also known as fertilization so there is no difference between fertilization and syngamy it is a process where two gametes one 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 is from the mother and another one is from the father when they fuse together they fo they form a zygote which which is also known as diploid cell so again this is also known as fertilization so where this process takes place end adathula nadakkudhu whether from the parent body or the outside the body other base panni it is classified into two one is external fertilization another one is internal fertilization now let's see what is external fertilization as the name suggest external fertilization takes place outside the body of the parent so you have uh, sexual reproduction now a rendu organism involve agum one or um, one father one mother rendu per kitta inda gametes uh, 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 fuse aite adukapram eng one produce agum but and the gamete vandu fuse aayi zygote produce pandrathu enga nu solla enga nadakkudhe whether outside or inside solla namba renda classify pannu outside nadakkunda adu external fertilization ulla nadanda adu internal fertilization let's see outside uh, external fertilization pathi more in detail so example pathana you have fishes amphibian sponges so this i don't need to explain you in tamil it is very simple so if you take uh, this external fertilization mostly takes place in 
వాటర్ డ్వెల్లింగ్ ఆర్గానిజమ్స్ వాటర్ డ్వెల్లింగ్ ఆర్గానిజమ్స్ నా అక్వాటిక్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ లో ఇది మరి రివర్స్ ఫాన్స్ లేక్స్ ఓషన్ ఇంకా వాళ్ళ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆర్గానిజమ్స్ పాత్ర ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ దా నడుతాం మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది నాట్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ నాట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ బట్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ సో నమ్మ ఒక ఫిష్ అడే ఎగ్జాంపుల్ పాక పోయింగ్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ అ ఫిష్ అ ఫీమేల్ ఫిష్ ఫస్ట్ అ ఫీమేల్ ఫిష్ గోస్ అండ్ లేస్ ఎగ్స్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ది లెగ్ ఎగ్ సో ఇట్ గోస్ అండ్ లేస్ ది ఎగ్స్ అండ్ దెన్ అ మేల్ ఫిష్ విల్ కమ్ అండ్ రిలీజ్ దిస్ పామ్ సో వన్స్ దిస్ ఫీమేల్ ఫిష్ లేస్ ఎగ్స్ ద మేల్ ఫిష్ విల్ కమ్ అండ్ రిలీజ్ దిస్ పామ్ అండ్ ఫర్టిలైజ్ ది ఎగ్ నౌ దిస్ ప్రాసెస్ ఇస్ నోన్ అస్ సింగామి అండ్ దిస్ ఎగ్స్ విచ్ హెస్ బీన్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ uh at first was haploid that is padi chromosomes tar nunchi once the male come and release the uh, sp- uh, sperm it become uh, you know టూ అండ్ నంబర్స్ ఆర్ డి డైప్లాయిడ్ సెల్స్ డై డిప్లాయిడ్ సెల్స్ సో ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ నడిచి ఇదికి దా నంబర్ సింగామి సొరో ఇది ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ వెలీ అపారెంట్ బాడీల నడకమ వెలీ నడకదాల ఇది ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ సొరో అదే అగైన్ వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ దిస్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ ఇస్ మోర్ వల్నరబుల్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ దిస్ ఇన్ ఎగ్స్ రైట్ దే హ్ మోర్ వల్నరబుల్ టు ది ప్రిడేషన్ ప్రిడేషన్ నా ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇది పోయిట్ వెలియ లే పనిడిచి మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది అనిమల్స్ పాతన వన్స్ దే రిప్రొడ్యూస్ మేట్ అండ్ యు నో రిప్రొడ్యూస్ ఎగ్స్ ఆల్ దిస్ థింగ్స్ దే విల్ డై సో దిస్ ఎగ్స్ ఆర్ ఆన్ ఆన్ దే నోర్ ఆన్ దేర్ ఓన్ లైక్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ దేర్ పేరెంట్ ఈస్ నాట్ దేర్ టు ప్రొటెక్ట్ దెమ్ సో దట్ ఈస్ వై these fishes and uh, this externally producing organism have adapted themselves to produce hundreds of uh, eggs and uh, hundreds of eggs so that uh, even if 50 or th- 50% or 30% may die the remaining uh, percentage will grow and continue its species ipo purida eppadi adaptation nadandirukkante so veliya nadakkaradala idu patna idude cell egg patna outer or cell membrane nala da cover a irukum enough enough male vandu adude sperm fuse panni fertilize pannalla adukaga so adhe mari veliya irukkaradala nariya poi adu saaptundradukaga ఇది ఒక బ్యూటిఫుల్లాన అడాప్టేషన్ పొడిచిరు లైక్ నరియ ఎగ్స్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ పని నరియ మేల్స్ సో నరియ ఎగ్స్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ పని సో అది పాది ఇరందుటాలో పాది సెత్తుటాలో ఉనికి పాది ఉయిరోడ్ ఇరుకో అగైన్ అది స్పీషీస్ వంద కంటిన్యూ అవుకు సో దిస్ ఇస్ వాట్ అన్ ఎక్స్ ఎక్స్ట్రా ఫీచర్ అబౌట్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ బట్ వెన్ యూ కంపేర్ దిస్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ విత్ ఇంటర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ ఇంటర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ ఇస్ మోర్ అడ్వాంటేజ్ దెన్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ బికాస్ యూ గెట్ ఫుల్ ప్రొటెక్షన్ యాజ్ ది ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ ది మే and female gametes you know gets uh, fertilized inside the parent cell itself example pertana reptiles aves and mammals reptiles na nan theriyalla aves na nan theriyalla aves na birds all the birds and all of this comes under aves reptiles in pertana uh, snakes crocodiles all these are reptiles again idunudiya fertilization ullu nadandalo eppadi adu engu vanna produce pandradhu podrathu irukku again it can be different uh, differentiated adha namba further on next slide la paapom so now we we have seen how and this in, in uh, inside the uh, ex- internal fertilization takes place patana uh, so parent body ku nalla protective fertilization nadandra perak baby grow agudala so unlike this fellows so that is the major difference between external and internal fertilization so let's see again how the kinds of uh, syngamy syngamy na fusion of male and female gametes and uh, it produces a zygote to and fertilize it so adha da nam syngamy nu sonnala so enna na type of syngamy irukku nu paapom for example you have uh, many types of syngamy so i'll be explaining those things shortly you have autogamy exogamy hologamy pyrogamy mirogamy isogamy and anisogamy let's see one by one you know in sh- um, briefly so first let's let's talk about autogamy so autogamy na enna artho auto means like anything that goes on its own for example vehicle is go on, goes on its own so adhe madri autogamy patna ore individual organism la irukum for example or for they have given an example of actinos actinos perimar paramecium so in the paramecium ore cell da adaliye pathina male and female oda gametes irukum so namba idukku munadi paatham mammals la pathina for example humans patna parent uh, mother mother kitta irundhu or sperm cell uh, uh, egg varum egg cell varum 
அப்புறம் ஃபாதர் கிட்ட இருந்து பேரண்ட்ஸ் வரும் ரெண்டுமே ப்ரொடியூஸ் ஃபர்டிலை ஃபியூஸ் ஆகி சென்காமி ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் நடக்கும் ஜைக் அவுட் நடக்கும் பட் இன் ஆட்டோகாமி இட் இஸ் செல்ஃப் ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் ஒன் வித் இன் தி ஒன் சிங்கிள் பேரண்ட் they will have both male and female gametes so that is what autogamy so you the examples are uh, paramecium actinosperium actinoperium actinosperium sorry so this paramecium also does this asexual reproduction i have also explained you that so this kind of into you know this organisms does different types of reproduction why means because they have to survive ultimate purpose ena ella organisathukku survive so that is why they have adapted different uh, you know mechanism to survive in different ways asexual sexual like that so now let's see what about um, um, so uh, you, autogamy means like uh, i told you like they form a zygote right let's see what is exogamy exogamy best example means from two individual parents two individual parents you get you know uh, 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 gametes best example are uh, mammals humans from mother and father you get two, uh, two gametes uh, one one carries off of the information another carries off the information that is why we call them biparental or dioecious dioecious means so two individual organism will have uh, a separate reproducing organ so that is why we call that dioecious or unisexual unisexual and dioecious both means for example male have separate uh, reproducing organ that produce sperm and female have separate reproducing uh, organ that produce egg or ovum so this is what biparental bi means two parents are involved and finally you get zygote when these two you know uh, um, germ cell fuse together you get zygote and fertilization takes place and you have hologamy holo means whole holo means whole the entire body itself becomes uh, you know uh, uh, gametes so some lower organism like protist the prokaryote single cell organism and all that entire body becomes uh, gametes they themselves uh, change them into gametes change it uh, changes gametes and you know produce uh, uh, zygote and uh, again reproduce A example is trico nympha and uh, this is the species right uh, like after uh, asexual reproduction what happens sometimes under some conditions so they uh, themselves convert as gametes and uh, this will acts as and uh, you know uh, then this goes and fuse with another parent and uh, form a zygote now let's see what is pyrogamy pyrogamy means so it's a sexual union of individual after mitotic division so you know what is mitotic division right we have studied what is mitotic division so so first it, it does asexual reproduction so where egg individual is produced due to the uh, mitotis process by binary fission this actinophrys is an example so and after that those egg individuals right which is produced after mitosis mitosis will you know unite themselves to form a zygote so i will exp- i'll give you an example here so this is a microscopic picture of it about it but let's see detail about it. let's see in detail so the two cells have been produced due to binary fission due uh, by through asexual reproduction as soon as they have been produced through mitosis right this two young new individual which is produced start uniting and they themselves act as a gametes and you know fuse and finally they will produce a zygote see it becomes a zygote two cells unite fuse together and forms a zygote this is what uh, this pyrogamy means let's see further about merogamy mero means a uh, fusion of morphologically different gametes so morphologically means appearance wise gametes different a irukum so adha da namu vandu merogamy solrom and you have isogamy iso means similar iso means similar ore maadhiriya irukirathu so ipo namba eduthutta nu chikka humans or mammals etna gametes oda structure morphologically they differ and uh, but isogamy la morphological as well as physiologically physiologically identical i'll tell you what is physiologically later in another uh, 
கேமீஸ் ஸோ மார்ஃபாலஜிக்கலி அண்ட் பிசியாலஜிக்கலி ஐடென்டிக்கல் ஸோ ஒரே மாதிரியாக இருக்கோ அதனுடைய ஆக்ஷன் மூவ் பண்ணுறது எல்லாமே ஒரே மாதிரியாக இருக்கிறோ ரெண்டு கேமிட்ஸ் யூனைட் ஆகிட்டு ஜைகோட் ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணுறது தான் நம்ம ஐசோகேமிஸ் சொல்கிறோம் எக்ஸாம்பிள் மோனோசிஸ்டிசிஸ் ஃபிராமினிஃபரன்ஸ் ஃபிராமினிஃபரன்ஸ்னா இந்த மோஸ்ட்லி அக்வாட்டிக் என்விரான்மெண்ட்ல பாட்டம்ல சி ஃபுளோர்ல அதுக்கப்புறம் ஃப்ரெஷ் வாட்டர் என்விரான்மெண்ட்ல பாட்டம்ல இருக்கிற ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் தான் ஃபொராமினிஃபரன்ஸ் சொல்லும் அது பார்க்கறதுக்கு இட் இட் இஸ் நாட் லுக் லைக் அன் ஆர்கானிசம் இட் லுக்ஸ் லைக் அ ஷெல் பட் இட் இஸ் இன் அ லைவ் ஆர்கானிசம் வெரி மைக்ரோஸ்கோபிக் அண்ட் யூ ஹாவ் அனிசோகேமி விச் இஸ் ஆல்சோ நோன் எஸ் யூ நோ ஹியூமன்ஸ் வி கேன் சே சிம்பிள் யூ நோ அக்கர்ஸ் இன் ஹையர் அனிமல்ஸ் அண்ட் மேட்ஸ் வேர் தேர் ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் and takes place two different gametes so but in general we call this process as uh, fertilization or a syngamy so far we have been uh, seeing what is syngamy and uh, wow, the kinds of syngamy all this we have seen so let's see what is uh, conjugation in this uh, slide conjugation means it is a temporary union of two individuals to produce a zygote okay and then once they produce a zygote they separate and produce two daughter individuals and uh, like how it naturally reproduce in sexually organisms let's see this process in detail see uh, the best example is i have already told you conjugation in my asexual reproduction video also so where two paramecium's which actually uh, look similar at the same time but if you look at the surface chemical constituent it differs those Uh, differences i mean organism that has that differences only unite together i mean these two individuals now started united started uniting and once they have united they will exchange some genetic material so here you had nucleus right so this macronucleus will disintegrate soon after the sometimes then micronucleus will contain genetic information will be you know exchanged here as you look at here so look here so the nucleus right that is been exchanged the nu- uh, nuclear genetic information once the nuclear material has been uh, exchanged the syngamy i mean uh, the fertilization of uh, two uh, paramecium st- i mean two s- uh, cells takes place for example this nucleus had uh, ex- ex- i mean uh, two paramecium first had explain exchange its genetic material once it has exchanged its genetic material this nuclei again produce many uh, nucleus to uh, you know fuse to form zygote once it has formed zygote again it will separate and produce to uh and i mean again they separate into two new daughter individuals actually this is a big process but uh, i don't think uh, which is very important for you guys to understand now so just it is a simple process where two paramecium unite together and exchange some genetic information from the nucleus and once they have united and they form zygote fertilize once they have formed zygote then separate each other again this separated cell will produce new uh, paramecium cells do you know why this conjugation takes place in paramecium uh, after continuous uh, binary division it has to rejuvenate itself so that is why two different uh, paramecium which uh, again it is the same species but two different paramecium which will have uh, genetic information proper genetic information or something uh, then they unite together and exchange the genetic material so that that they can rejuvenate adavadu pudupichi kondukka mudiyum and again there are some conditions at the uh, like unfavorable condition at, at such uh, such conditions also they do this conjugation process conjugation means unit 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 of two individuals so that is the conjugation now we have seen what is conjugation um, again uh, there are uh, different uh, examples like verticella and bacteria many prokaryotes do this uh, conjugations in order to rejuvenate themselves let's see uh, phases of life cycle phases of life cycle na enna enna kattangal vaazhkaiyila irukke enna enna patangal kuzhandai matured stage like that so you have uh, three phases juvenile phase so let's see uh, what is uh, juvenile phase and uh, reproductive phase and sensory phase but uh, we, what we are going to see now is juvenile phase so after uh, syngamy after fertilization after uni, 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 uh, 
emission of or i mean uh, once these uh, two gamete cells unite they develop and uh, form an individual produce an young one so this young one grow as a adult and mature person so the the duration between the growth phase between this uh, young one to this matured or reproductive uh, uh, organisms i mean from an young one until when it has uh, when it when it is ready ready to reproduce uh, so between this phase the growth what we call juvenile phase so during this phase you you can have uh, see lot of uh, changes in the uh, uh, many animals and organisms both physically and uh, you know appearance wise as well so and uh, once it has entered into reproduct reproductive phase right so this organism is ready to reproduce uh, so that is what we call reproductive phase so reproductive re, in a, now you understand right a rep, um, juvenile phase na in the kolandai parvathile nundu matured person adavad reproductive phase ku idai patta and growth kaalathai da namba juvenile phase solrom reproductive phase da uh, and the organism and ready to reproduce adavad young ones produce pandrathukku matured ay grow ay irukku nartham so again in the time la whether uh, this reproduction takes place for uh, for uh, throughout the year or particular uh, time or particular season it can be classified into two so those are uh, you know seasonal breeders and uh, and uh, uh, continuous breeders so breeders means organism that reproduce and uh, you know grow uh breeders means or uh, organism uh, reproduce pandra uh, pandra ella organism eh namba breeders solrom adhaadu mother and father for example uh, fishes la eduthitna breeders nu thaniya eduth vechirupanga nalla healthy a irukra or male fish or female fish yo breeders solvanga adu continuous a reproduce pannite irukum so let's get back to our topic seasonal breeders na a particular season la mattum da they breed they reproduce mate and producing ones so adha da seasonal breeders solrom for example fishes amphibians um, many birds deer all these are like seasonal breeders so lizards patana birds patana particular season la mattum da they mate and the mating process ke they have different uh, process like a uh, birds eduthidrena like uh, they have to attract uh, so a female by you know constructing a very beautiful nest all these things you must have seen it so these are all part of reproduction and mating process so this takes place only in particular season so hence we call them seasonal breeders let's see what is continuous breeders continuous breeder na throughout the year they can uh, reproduce so best example is honey bees honey bees adukapra vand poultry and the chicken hen all this or rabbits idala vand continuous breeders so the uh, this uh, honey bee why we call continuous breeders pathi will be ta- seeing more about in parthenogenesis right and the final phase what you have is you know sensent phase so let's see what is sensent phase sensent phase now once the organism reproduces its young one and it grows to very old and its body mechanism slowly ceases to function so the old age old phase da namba vandu sensent phase nu solrom seriya let's see let's see what is parthenogenesis okay parthenogenesis parthenos parthenos means virgin okay genesis means produce without fertilization an egg one is produced through this process is known as parthenogenesis adavadu without fusion of two gametes but again there are such uh, exception takes place in this parthenogenesis but i'll explain you why and how when this happens so parthenos means virgin genesis means produce without fertilization it produces an egg one it is known as parthenogenesis and this process was first discovered by charles burnett in 1745 so he was actually working on to you know this uh, uh, honey bees and when, then then and he found out that uh, there are uh, organisms that produce uh, without fertilization without syngamy and there you might uh, consider this as asexual reproduction no it's not asexual reproduction i told you what is asexual reproduction asexual reproduction means without involvement of gametes you get an egg one 
and that anguan will genetically and morphologically identical to its parent but in parthenogenesis you have gametes which means eggs you have eggs or uh, you know uh, this i mean eggs produces in one but there is no fertilization so these eggs again might have haploid number of chromosomes and diploid number of chromosomes let's see more about that so let's see the definition again Develop, development of an egg into a complete individual without fertilization is known as parthenogenesis adavadhu or egg vandu without fertilization without fusion of other uh, male uh, male or female oda illa male oda uh, gamete vandu rendu fuse aagama fertilize aagama and the egg vandu develop aagiradha da nam enna solrena parthenogenesis so now you are clear what is parthenogenesis adavad nam idhukku munadi patha sin gamila rendu gamete cells irukku one from mother one from father so egg goes sperm unite ai fertilize ai adukapra egg once produce panna most of the organisms but in parthenogenesis la ore or gamete cell da irukku and egg matter irukku and the egg matter enna aguna fuse agama fertilize agama aduve egg one ah produce agum so adha da parthenogenesis solrom adha and the virgin solrom seriya next let's uh, let's see more about this parthenogenesis so this parthenogenesis uh, is of two types natural parthenogenesis and artificial parthenogenesis let's see what is natural parthenogenesis in detail so net again natural parthenogenesis is of different type herent herentoki which means it only produces males and will have only haploid number of chromosomes examples are honey bees and you have uh, the thylotoki they produces only females but they will have uh, you know diploid number of chromosome i'll tell you later so the best example is this um, uh, moth which uh, which actually you know produces haploid uh, uh, grows from this athelotaki process through parthenogenesis you have ambitoki ambitoki so this process produces any type of uh, sex it can be a male or a female so rendu me produce pannala but without fertilization so best example is aphis so aphis is a insect actually it's a pesticide um, and the crops la poitu uh, it will eat so this takes place in uh, aphis uh, in uh, a uh, natural parthenogenesis let's see what is natural parthenogenesis i forgot to tell you natural parthenogenesis means some organisms the uh, fertilization without gamete you know without uh, fert- uh, without fertilization it constantly takes place so that is why we call that natural parth- parthenogenesis again you have two types of natural parthenogenesis one is complete parthenogenesis and incomplete parthenogenesis complete parthenogenesis means some organisms do not even uh, produce males so uh, they only have females as a parent and when they produce an egg one again their egg one will also always be females so in this type all the organism that produces are uh, grows or you know all of them are females because there are no males there are no uh, unition of uh, by uh, male parent or uh, male organisms so all the organisms all the egg, uh, animals that grows you know from complete parthenogenesis are females in incomplete parthenogenesis best example is you know uh, honey bees because you have two types one is sexual reproduction where where by parent all that is two parent me involve agum male anibiyu female anibiyu involve ai zygote form ai adukapra produce pannu unnadu parthenogenesis mattume nadakum parthenogenesis na vero egg vand haploid cell appadi develop agum let me explain you how so what happens this bees right you know in bee colony you have queens drones worker bees so the queens are the uh, uh, center uh, control center of the entire uh, beehive so these queens fertilize from uh, produced from the sexual reproduction once uh, through the uh, uh, egg and uh, sperm um, unite uh, through the fertilization process and worker bee also but queens bees eppadi id produce pannadha nichukanga generally this uh, uh, bees right they do a sexual reproduction especially queens do the sexual uh, sexual reproduction so the only purpose of the drones is to um, you know 
uh, supply uh, spermatozoans as uh, sperms to uh, queens during uh, you know mating and that is the only purpose of the drones because you know drones don't have this um, uh, uh, needle to uh, you know get the food but uh, workers does many function so queens are the uh, one that produces uh, uh, workers as well as drones let's see how why after uh, mating uh, as i told you the drones only purpose is to go and um, mate with the queen and the queen gets um, sperm cells spermatozoans uh, around 70 to 100 billion uh, spermatozoans into the uh, into the queen's body so as soon as uh, they do that process the male drone dies off that is the uh, worst part here so the uh, female uh, female has uh, uh, now the uh, egg uh, male uh, cells as well which is known as spermatozoans 70 to 100 billion spermatozoans which is more than enough for the 100 uh, for, uh, for the next 4 years to continuously produce drones and workers so this queen bee decides whether to uh, uh, so it has this spermatozoan inside the uh, uh, queen bee so once they lay egg Uh, the uh, fertilized eggs are known as uh, worker bee which means when when when, it, when they are about to lay the eggs the uh, uh, queen bee inject the spermatozoan sperm cell while laying into the workers uh, bee so that workers will be will have deployed number of chromosomes because it uh, it got uh, half of the chromosome from the mother and half of the chromosome from the spermatozoan it had in the queen and the drones right the drones when when queen bee lays eggs the drone uh, it lays only uh, that uh, egg which has only half of the chromosomes because it will not fertilize it so the, that unfertilized eggs will grow as drones again grow and the main purpose of the uh, drones is to uh, uh, produce uh, spermatozoans and maintain the temperature and the worker bees will have deployed number of chromosomes because while laying the eggs the uh, female uh, the queen inject the spermatozoan into the eggs that is why it gets have a de deployed number of chromosome and produce zygote so from sexual reproduction only these uh, workers bees and queens are produced by fertilization in parthenogenesis you get only drones because it lays only eggs which has a haploid number of chromosomes because it will not fertilize by injecting that spermatozoans into that eggs while laying so now you are cl clear what is incomplete parthenogenesis because you don't have uh, only one type of parthenogenesis you have both sexual and pa parthenogenesis that is why it is known as incomplete parthenogenesis again you have one another type of parthenogenesis which is pe pure genetic parthenogenesis pseudo means larva so it takes place in the larva this larva right uh, for example previously we saw all the organisms that comes out of from the egg egg la irundhu varadala namba varadala namba adha parthenogenesis solrom but pseudo genetic la egg la irundhu illama larva la irundhu இன்னொரு இன்னொரு லாவா ப்ரொடியூஸ் ஆகும் சைமல்டேனியஸ்லா இது மெயினா பார்த்தா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இந்த லாவா பியூரோஜெனிக்ல ஸ்போரோசிஸ்டா மைரோசிடியமா இருக்கும் அண்ட் தென் ஸ்போரோசிஸ்டா மாறும் ஸ்போரோசிஸ்டா மாறிய பிறகு ஃபைனலி ரேடியோ லாவாவா மாறும் அதாவது ஒரு லாவை ஒரு லாவால இருந்து ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் இல்லாம இன்னொரு ஃபீமேல் மேல் ரெண்டு ஃபர்டிலைசேஷன் அதாவது இன்னொரு ஜெர்ம் செல் இல்லாம ஒரே லாவா இன்னொரு லாவாவா மாறும் ஸ்போரசிஸ்டா அந்த லார்வா அகெயின் ரேடியல் லாவாவா மாறி ஃபைனலா லிவர் ஃபிளூக்கா இருக்கும் இந்த லிவர் ஃபுளூக்ன்றது ஒரு பேரசிட்டிக் ஃபார்ம் மெயினா கோட் மெனி வெட்டபிரேட்ஸ்ல இருக்கும் மேமல்ஸ்ல இருக்கும் ஸோ இட் காசஸ் டிசீஸ் டு அனிமல்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் வாட் பீரோஜெனட்டிக் பார்த்தனோஜெனிசிஸ் அகெயின் யூ ஹாவ் கேல் ஃபிளை தட் ஆல்சோ டஸ் திஸ் பீரோஜெனிக்டிக் parthenogenesis lastly you have artificial parthenogenesis this artificial parthenogenesis only takes uh, you know uh, happens when there is a external uh, in, in uh, induced uh, index, uh, for example stimulation so in annelida sea urchin eggs if you collect it and if you induce or increase the temperature or provide a, a, a minimum saline environment that will develop into an egg once 
analytes means it is a polyketid a kind of a worm that present inside the uh, ocean sea urchin also um, sea creature organisms so these eggs can be uh, you know artificially cheyarkaya namba or temperature increase panniyo and eggs la and the media la temperature increase panniyo illa salinity content saline content konche increase panna na they will uh, develop into new individuals this is what artificial uh, parthenogenesis genesis so we have seen in detail what is parthenogenesis let's go so so far we have seen what is parthenogenesis let's enter to the last part of the chapter which is uh, based on the embryo development the organism whether it lays or give birth based on that you have three type of organisms known as oviparous viviparous and ovo viviparous let's see what is oviparous first ovi means organism that lays eggs mostly patana water dwelling organisms and aves idella patana they lay eggs after fertilization okay embryo develops inside that leg egg right so if you look at here amphibians fish and insects reptiles aves idella patana they lay eggs adavu uh, uh, for example hen la patana fertilization takes place inside the uh, hen but uh, embryo development young one development ellame veliya da nadakkudu they will lay the eggs eggs are lay pandradala nam we call them oviparous so example chicks and uh, hens ella paathana they come out of from this uh, egg and uh, you have uh, another type which is known as viviparous best example is mammals vivi means alive okay produce paris means produce so paris uh, ovi means like uh, not uh, alive like something which is covered by shell vivi paris means vivi means alive so something that uh, young one which is produced is alive for example in the case of ovi paris it is not alive but inside the embryo is slowly developing the organism is slowly developing and finally it will hatch out and uh, a new young one is formed but in vivi paris inside the parent animal itself the organism embryo development and organi- uh, the individual egg individual will keep on grow and finally will be uh, will be produced or give given birth so that is what we call viviparous so ex- best example is mammals like humans and uh, all the mammals like uh, cows uh, dogs cats all these are viviparous but when you compare this viviparous and oviparous oviparous animals are more vulnerable and in danger and this this is like most safest one for example because the egg one fertilization and the growth of egg one embryo development everything takes place inside the animal itself inside the parent itself but in oviparous it's not like that so after fertilization some animals uh, uh, external fertilization takes place or internal fertilization takes place but these animals lays eggs outside so these eggs will have to develop a grow on its own except hen or uh, you know some insects and reptiles you know what is reptiles right reptiles or snakes crocodiles all this comes under reptiles aves means all the birds comes under uh, aves insects means moth flies all this comes under insects so so like when you compare this and this this has less protection than this uh, this right so that is why like viviparous is more advantage than oviparous and finally you have ova viviparous for example oviparous means organism that lays eggs and producing ones right so ova viviparous viviparous means uh, organism that produced a live one so in ova viviparous the egg or uh, once the egg is uh, the egg develop inside the parent itself inside the parent egg uh, inside the uh, mother parent itself and hatches hatches out and it produces egg one but the connection from the parent and mothers stays for some times for example shark if you you if you look at the picture the placenta is still connected with the mother but in here in oviparous the eggs will have a uh, nourishment in the yolk you have lot of nutrients so that is why the egg one gets all the nutrients it requires for its growth and development but in the case of ova viviparous the, uh, the egg will develop inside the parent body itself and once they come out they will have some attachment through placenta to provide nutrition to the baby until for some times so this is what we call ova viviparous and it is observed in shark rays snakes and some some snakes too 
uh, this snakes uh, you know can also be uh, found in oviparous as well as in ova viviparous so different organisms have adapted themselves to survive in different environmental conditions okay guys that's it for today so i will see you guys in the next next chapter from botany which is your chapter 1 make sure that you go and read after uh, seeing this tutorial so i will conduct your test and I'll, i will also give you a lot of uh, questions which is from inside the book so if you only uh, watch this video and observe it you will be able to answer all those questions thank you see you guys in next chapter